Okay, let's do another problem. Now our language is the language of center-marked palindromes. That is, the language of palindromes, but with a special symbol dollar sign in the middle to denote where the middle of the palindrome is. If you didn't have the dollar sign here, so just the regular set of palindromes, a deterministic push-down automata wouldn't actually be able to recognize it. And the reason is it has to sort of guess where the middle of the string is. It has to at some point decide to stop pushing things and start popping things. And if you're partway through a palindrome, you don't know if you're at the halfway point yet or not. But because this is center marked, we can do this. We just keep pushing things for W till we get dollar sign, and then start popping, matching ones for ones, zeros for zeros, and then if we can't, we fail. So from Q0, read no input. Stack is empty, push the special special symbol, go to Q1. And so what do I want to do here? Well, what can this language be? I guess it can be one of a few things. It can be just a dollar sign by itself. It can be zero dollar sign zero, one dollar sign one, one zero dollar sign zero one, and then so on and so forth. <clears throat> so if we see a dollar sign, we should immediately accept so see a dollar sign, see the end of stack symbol S, pop, and then go to an accepting state immediately. If not, whatever symbol's on there, we have to push, and then we're going to start continue pushing things. So we'll go to Q3. If I see a 1 on the input and a S on the stack, push 1S. If I see a 0 on the input and an S on the stack, then push 0S. Okay, so now got, there is stuff on the front, so let's keep pushing it. So as long as I keep seeing symbols, shove them on the stack. So 1, 1, uh, push 1, 1, 0 on the input, 0 on the stack, push double 0. And I want to keep doing this until I see a dollar sign. When I see a dollar sign, I'm going to transition to a new state where I start deleting things back off again. So go to state Q4. If I see a dollar sign on the input, and a zero on the stack, I'm going to put the zero back. And if I see a dollar sign on the input and a one on the stack, I'm going to put the one back. So I'm not going to consume that one. I'm going to Q4. And what Q4 will do is it will read the input and then pop things off the stack such that they match. The idea is if we have a palindrome 100 zero, zero, dollar sign 001, zero, push the one, push the zero, push the zero. Dollar sign, time to go backwards. Match the zero, match the zero, match the one. So that's how this thing's going to recognize center-marked palindromes. So you've seen the dollar sign, we're at the halfway mark, so let's start popping things. Zero on input, zero on stack, gobble them both up. One on input, one on stack, gobble them both up. If there's a zero one, I don't need to write a transition for that because I can just fail to do anything. If I ever get stuck, that means I reject. So I don't have to explicitly write those cases. All right, and then what else? Um, right, when do I accept? When the input is empty and I see S. Input is empty and I can see S. Eat the S and then go to an accepting state, Q5, or really go back down to Q2, I guess. So, C, consume no input, C empty, stack S, Eat the S and then go to Q2. There we go. Let's do a trace of this. And we'll do a trace for an accepting string and a trace for a rejecting string. So what's, the, what's an accepting string? Uh, one, zero, dollar, zero, one. What's a rejecting string? One, zero, dollar, one, zero. So let's try this one first. Q naught, one, zero, dollar, zero, one, Z. Consume no input. Read the Z, push SZ. And then go to Q1. Q1, 1, 0, dollar, 0, 1, S, Z. Can I see a dollar sign immediately? Uh, no. So if I see a 1 and the start symbol, push the 1 on the stack. And then go to Q3. So Q3, 0, dollar, 0, 1, 1, S, Z. Okay. Um, oh, these symbols don't have to match necessarily. So what I should have said is, regardless of what's on the stack, push it back. So, zero on the input, zero on the stack, push the both zeros. One on the input, one on the stack, push both ones. 
zero and then put one on the stack. Put the zero and the one back in the same order. One, zero, one, zero. So a zero on the input and a one on the stack. Pop the one and then push zero one. So we're basically putting the one back and putting the zero on top. Now go back to Q3. It's really good to do these traces. You can spot errors in your machine just as I did then. Okay. Now I see a dollar on the input and a zero on the stack. So I delete the dollar, delete the zero and put the zero straight back again. And then transition to Q4. So pop the zero and put it back. Match zeros. Match ones. I see um, an S on the input stack, so I take an epsilon transition to Q2 and I accept. Accept. Okay, cool. Now let's try rejecting. So we do the same thing again. I'll skip a few steps and get down to here. So Q3 dollar sign one zero zero one as said. Because the initial prefix is the same, the behavior is going to be the same because it's deterministic. Then what would we have done from this stage? So you pop the dollar. So I'm in Q3, one on the input, one on the stack. I'm in Q4, I beg your pardon. One on the input, one on the stack, one on the input, zero on the stack, I beg your pardon. What do I do? Ah, oh, shoot. Doesn't look like there's anything I can do, right? I can't read a 1, 1, I can't read a 0, 0, and I can't take this epsilon transition because it requires an S on the stack. And I've got a 0 on the stack, so I can't do nothing, so I reject. Okay? Accepted, rejected. 